In this video, I'm gonna go over some basics of painting with acrylic paint. So the materials that I have right now, I've got four different brushes. I probably won't use them all, but I wanted to show you what they all are anyway. I've got two round brushes. Round brushes are shaped like this, and I have two flat brushes. Flat brushes are shaped like this. And I have a larger and a smaller one of each, and I'm gonna show you different things that you would use each brush for. I've got a few different colors. I'm using Blick Studio acrylic paints. You could substitute this information with any acrylic paint though. Um, I've got red, orange, and yellow because I'm going to make an analogous color gradient. And then I've got magenta with white and black because I'm gonna make a great uh, monochromatic gradient. I've got a jar of water and I've got a couple of paper towels that I can use. So I'm gonna show you um, some different things with these materials. First, I'm gonna show you how to hold your paintbrush. So the most basic way to hold your paintbrush is really just holding it like you hold your pencil. There are different grips that different artists use for different things, but right now we're just gonna start with the basics. So if you hold it like you hold your pencil, the closer that you hold it down to the bottom, the more control you generally have over it. If you're holding your paintbrush way back here, you have less control over what you're doing. So try to hold it down here. So I'm gonna start by using the smaller round brush to paint a small shape to show you how I would do that. I'm gonna draw a triangle because it gives me some smaller angles to work with. Sometimes it's hard to get into little areas like this. So I wanna show you how I do that. I'm just gonna choose a color, I'm gonna use red. I'm gonna get some paint on my paintbrush. I'm not dipping the whole paintbrush into the paint. I don't want a ton of paint all the way up here um, on the paintbrush because that's gonna be hard to control later. My fingers might get into it and then it's spreading that around. I'm gonna try to keep it clean. So I'm just putting a little bit of the paintbrush in there. And then I'm gonna point the end of my paintbrush towards one of the corners. I'm not gonna put straight, I'm not gonna place my paintbrush straight down on top of that corner though, because when you put it down, the paintbrush spreads out a little bit. And I wanna have more control over that. So I'm gonna gradually move up closer and closer until I get to that corner. The more you paint, the better understanding you'll have of how to do this. So you may not necessarily have to be this careful if you've been painting for a while. You might have a little bit more intuition of what to do. But if you haven't been painting for a while and this is new, start further back away from the area where you want the paint to go. Now I've got that corner done. I'm gonna go to one of these other angles and I'm still gonna point, I'm pointing the end of that round tip brush towards the angle. I, tr I rotated my hand, so instead of like holding it like this, like I was for this corner, now I'm holding it this way. And I'm gonna gradually pull that color out away from the corner. And then to do the other corner, I'm actually gonna rotate my paper because it would be easier than trying to turn my hand like that. And I'm gonna point the end of my paintbrush towards that corner. So you're seeing me reload my brush with more paint. I'm still being very careful with how much I'm dipping my paintbrush into the paint. And now that I'm, I've got the whole shape filled, I'm actually gonna go over some of these little areas where the paint is a little bit thicker because I don't want those smooth, I don't want those brush strokes. I want it to be smooth. So you may have a reason for wanting texture in your painting. There's nothing wrong with that, but I want you to be able to control the texture so that if you want it to be smooth, you're able to make that happen. Now, some of the different paint colors that we have are thinner than others. For example, the orange paint that I have right now is a little bit thinner than the red. So if I were trying to do a shape with that, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Do another triangle. I would probably have to paint several layers in order for it to be thick enough. So you can see how this is a lot thinner. So I, this is transparent. So because this paint color is so transparent, I'm gonna to have to use a couple of layers. Now it may be that, this is a fairly new bottle, it may be that some of the 
the binder medium is just sitting at the top and it needs to be shaken up better. So I may try to do that later and see if that's what's going on with this because usually my orange paint is not so thin. Um, you need to just get to know your paints and once you get to know the paints that you have, you'll notice that certain colors are thicker or thinner than others. <clears throat> and it helps to know that whenever you're blending your colors together. You've seen me rinse my brush off a few times and wipe it on this paper towel, so I wanna tell you another tip. So I have the water here so that I can rinse and then I can wipe it off over here. I've seen students in the past have like a paper towel where they'll they'll like wipe it like this. When you do that, I'm gonna show you this. Let's say I'm trying to wipe off this paint. Well, now I have paint on all these different parts of the towel and it's gonna be more likely to get in other places and be messy and I'm gonna need a new paper towel a lot faster. So I like to keep my paper towels flat on the surface next to, next to my painting. And I tend to use the top part first. So I'll rinse, I'll wipe it off, and I gradually move my way down. And when I fill this up, I'll get a new paper towel and put it on top. And it just helps keep things cleaner. The cleaner you keep it, the cleaner you're gonna keep your artwork. It's just gonna be a lot less frustrating. So let's talk about the flat brush now. So that's, I use the round brushes for details and for smaller shapes. The flat brushes, and I'm gonna use the smaller flat brush for right now. Um, I will use this for bigger areas if I need to co cover a larger area with paint. So, and the way that I'm painting, I'm kind of going back and over the same area like this. I can go in different directions. I could go this way, I could go up and down but you're not coloring like you would with a colored pencil or with a pencil. You're not doing this. This is gonna damage your brush. The bristles are gonna be kind of everywhere. You wanna to try to use um, strokes more like this or like this. It depends on how you rotate the brush. You can go in different directions, um, but you want it to be more smooth like this, not, not jagged back and forth. So I use the flat brush for larger areas like that. Another good thing that a flat brush is good for is if you need to make a straight line. So let's say I'm painting right up against an edge like this. So I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna angle it so that the corner of the brush is close to the line. But the same thing that I told you about with the corner over here, I started a little bit away because when you press the paintbrush against the paper, it's gonna spread out. So until you get better at um, knowing how far out it's gonna, the paint's gonna move when you press down, start further out than you think away from that line. And then you can kind of gradually get closer and closer. And then once you've got it lined up, you can just watch the corner edge of your paintbrush as you're moving along that line. Now, as I'm running out of paint, I'm gonna rotate it because I've got some paint on the other side of my paint the other side of the paintbrush and I can use that. I can also come up here and get some of the paint that where it's thicker up at this end and I can move it along. Now I've got to reload. I'm just barely dipping it in there, I'm not dunking the whole paintbrush in. I'm just dipping the end of it. I'm going to come back and continue the line. So that's how you can use a flat paintbrush for straight lines. And I'm gonna smooth this out because I'm not trying to have brush strokes show up. I want it to be all flat. Nothing wrong with brush strokes, but for this particular thing, I'm trying to get an even flat coat of paint. Okay, so that's the difference between the flat brush and the round brush and the different ways to use it, different ways to hold the paint brush, how to how to make those uh, marks on the paper. It's just, it's a little different the way you hold and the way you move a paintbrush compared to a pencil. So be aware of that, be thinking about what you're doing. Um, and those are the, the very, very basics. So we're gonna use a little bit of what we just learned to make a gradient. So a gradient is when you have a color change or a value change that is gradual. So that's where we get that word gradient. It's gradual from one side to the other. 
So the first gradient that I'm gonna do is um, a monochromatic gradient. We're gonna use one color and I'm gonna mix it with white and black. And I'm gonna start with the left side being the lighter side and the right side being the darker side. So I'm gonna mix up my light value of that color first. So I'm gonna use the middle area of my palette for mixing. This is the biggest space that I have um, when I start running out of space, sometimes I'll use these little areas in between here to mix colors, depending on how much of a color that I need. These wells, these are called palette wells, that's where I store the paint. So I put the paint that I needed in here, and I really, I, I probably should have put about this much of each color. I did not need that much paint for what we're doing. Um, so you're putting the paint into the wells, but you're using um, probably the flat places to mix your colors. You don't need to mix up a whole bunch of a color for something like this. Um, there might be a reason where, when you would use a well for mixing if you needed a lot of one color, um, but not for something like this. So we're gonna mix the shades that we need for the gradient in here. So I'm gonna scoop a, some white paint because we're starting with the lightest part of the gradient. And I'm using my brush and I'm just sort of tapping it in different directions to, I, I, I want to keep it in a small area. The bigger area that I spread this out, the more paint I'm going to have to mix to change my color. So this amount of space is, I think, a pretty good amount of space. So now I'm going to dip my paintbrush into the magenta that I have over here. And I'm going to blend it up with what I have. And I probably got way more magenta paint than I needed. So I'm gonna spread some of that out. I'm gonna get a little more white paint because I want my value to be a little bit lighter. Okay, so right now my paintbrush is a little too loaded. I've got a lot of thick paint because I've been mixing this color. So I'm gonna try to twist it a little bit here to wipe some of it off. I could wipe it off on the paper towel, but I'm not trying to waste all that paint. So now it's not as loaded. I'm gonna start over here, and I'm gonna start painting from the left. And as I'm moving to the right, there's different ways that you can blend colors with acrylic. If it's still wet on your paper, when you add the next color, you can sort of blend them together. So what I'm gonna do is since I'm gradually getting darker, I'm gonna add some more magenta, what I've got here. I'm gonna mix it up. And I'm gonna go directly to my paper. I'm gonna to try to work fast because I want to be able to blend this while the two colors are still wet. So I've got too much paint right now. What I'm doing is basically covering up that old color. So I'm going to wipe some of it off over here so my paintbrush is not as loaded. And then I'm going to go in and blend. So this is still wet over here so I can blend those two colors together a little more seamlessly. Now I'm going to dip, get some more magenta, mix it up. And I'm gonna to try to twist some of this off so it's not so loaded. I'm starting right here so that I can get some of the paint off my brush. And then I'm gonna gradually move this way because when I'm blending the two colors together, if I've got a whole glob of paint on this paintbrush when I'm trying to blend it into this, um, it's just gonna cover it up. It's not actually gonna mix. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I'm doing Stirring in a little more magenta, wiping off some of it, twisting it so that I don't have as much paint on my brush. I'm gonna just keep moving. If you find you've got a line right there and your paintbrush is still super loaded, wipe it off, paint right over that line. And you really do have to work fast. I'm gonna show you what you can do if it dries. In fact, I might should show you that soon in case that happens to you. So I'm gonna pause this for a second and let this dry so that I can show you what to do if it's too dry to blend. All right, so this is now dry but the paint over here hasn't dried yet. This is a little thicker. Once it's thin and it's on your paper, it dries a little bit faster. So this is still wet, but this is dry. So I'm gonna mix some more magenta into here. 
I'm gonna put it down and leave a little space so that I can get some of it off my brush first. If the color's close enough, it's not gonna be hard. If it's if the color is really different, it's gonna be a little bit harder. But once you get into this, if it's not blending well, rinse your paintbrush off, get some water on it, but not a lot of water. You're gonna I'm gonna wipe off some of this water because I don't want it to be like dripping. So it's it's just a wet paintbrush. And you can add a little bit of water and move to the left. Now it's hard to see that that worked because it was so close already. I'm gonna do this later on when I'm done with the gradient to show you um, how you would blend like two really different colors together instead of like that color was pretty close to the color I was blending it with. So it was really hard to see. I'll do that again later. I've got a lot of paint here, so it's not changing quite as much as I want it to. So I'm starting to mix just at the edge over here, so I'm not mixing it with all the paint that I have. Because I wanna to get to a point where I'm mixing it with black and I'm running out of space on my paper. So now I'm gonna put magenta right here. I think I'm at the point where I just wanna use straight magenta. And my magenta is pretty thin. So if I was really wanting this to look good, I would probably need to go back and do a second layer over this area that's just magenta. So I wiped off a loaded paintbrush because I'm trying to blend this and I needed to get a lot of that magenta paint off so I could blend it better. All right, I'm gonna start mixing some black into this. I need very little black to start the change. Like it's gonna make that black that I just added, that was too much. I need to go back and get a little more magenta and I barely dipped it in there at all. My brush is super loaded, so I'm gonna wipe some of this off. I know that I've still got thick paint on here, so I'm gonna use some of that to blend into this. And this is very thin right here. Like it's almost like it looks lighter because the paper is, is showing through because it's transparent. So it might need more than one layer later. Okay, this is what happens if you get too dark too fast. I went, oh no, it's way too dark. I'm gonna wipe off all of this paint. I'm gonna go back and get some magenta, mix it back in the color because I got too dark and go back on top of it while it's still wet. And I'm gonna start bringing some of this to the left. Some of this blending that I'm gonna do is gonna be straight onto the paper because it's so thin. Like I'm gonna do another layer of just magenta right in here on top of that. And because the magenta is so thin, it's going to be like looking through one layer and the layer underneath it is going to be blending with it. Kind of like if you had two different colors of plastic. Like if I had a piece of yellow colored plastic cellophane and a piece of blue plastic cellophane and I layered them on top of each other, it would appear green because you'd be looking through those two colors. That's sort of what I'm doing, what I'll do when I lay another color, a layer of a color on top of this. So if I do a layer of magenta on top of this, it'll be like blending magenta with that. That's called glazing when you do that. So you can glaze with acrylics. If, the, if you're trying to glaze with acrylics and the paint's not thin enough, you can add water to thin it out. I'll show you that later. Um, what I'm doing now, if you, if you look, what I, I keep painting over this area and you see how the paper's showing through and it's just getting lighter and lighter. Now I've got a black stripe there. So what I'm doing is wiping up some of the paint that's already there. If that happens to you, you need to let that dry and then do your other layer on top after it dries. If I keep trying to layer here while it's wet, I'm gonna keep pulling that paint back up and it's not gonna lay down. So I need to let this dry and then I'll continue the layers on top. 
While that's drying, I'm gonna show you how you can blend using water when, a paint's, when paint's already dry. So I've just got this magenta color right here. I'm gonna go straight with the white. Let's say I needed to blend this lighter value with that. So I'm gonna put this right here. I'm gonna get it a little bit thicker if I can, because I can see through it. You can sort of see the paint underneath it. So I've got two very different values. I'm gonna wipe off the paint and I'm gonna add a little bit of water. I'm not, I'm not going straight from here to the paper. I, that's too much water. I'm gonna wipe some of the water off on the paper towel. And I'm gonna keep drying the paintbrush off and gradually going into that magenta that's on the left. So you can see how that really watery pink over here is blending with the magenta under it. And then as I move to the right, I'm getting a thicker, more opaque version of that color. So because it's getting thinner with water over here, you can see through to the color underneath and that's how that's blending. So that's how you can blend a color if the other one's already dry. You can use water to gradually make it more transparent as you move into it. We're gonna see if this is dry enough yet to, to go back on top of that so I can fix what's going on over here. So I wanna make sure my brush is really dry um, or that's gonna mess, it. like if I put water on this and start trying to paint, it's gonna pull the color up again. So I wanna make sure that if I've rinsed my brush off, it's really super dry. It's not gonna pull up any more of the color that's already there because that's what's going on here and that's what the problem is. So I'm gonna get some more magenta on my brush and I'm gonna go back over this layer. And now it's covering that a little bit better. I still probably need another layer. I'm gonna get the black over here. And I'm gonna wipe off the brush and try to slowly blend that in into this side. So now this area is really my biggest problem. I think at this stage, I might actually need to go in with a lighter version because that white paint is thicker. So sometimes you have to do some back and forth and back and forth letting things dry in between because I really want to smooth this out because I've got this dark stripe right here. So I'm covering this up with some lighter paint. I'm going to let that dry and then I'll go back into it. So a lot of painting is trial and error and going back and forth layering things on top until you can figure out um, how to get it to look the way you want it to look. So at this point, I'm gonna let this dry again and I'll go back into this area where that dark stripe is bothering me. Um, but while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna show you how to do a gradient using three different colors. So we're gonna do an, an analogous gradient. Red, orange, and yellow are next to each other on the color wheel. We have red, orange in between and yellow, orange in between. So we're gonna use these three colors to blend a gradient. Um, and I'll show you how to do that with those. So I'm gonna start with the red on this side. And I may actually decide to use water this time. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna rinse my brush off a little bit, wipe some of the water off. And I'm using drawing paper so I need to be careful. This is not made for water. This is not made to use a lot of water, but it should work for what we're doing. This orange is super, super thin. So we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna go on top of 
this part with the orange and then I'm going to keep going. You can see how thin that orange is right there. So I'm going to need a couple of layers on that. I'm going to wipe off my brush so that it's not super loaded and go back in over here. And I'm gonna give this a little bit of time to dry so I can do another layer over top where it's a little bit thin. My paper towel is getting kind of full, so I'm gonna put a new paper towel on top. And while I'm waiting for this to dry, I'm gonna go back up here because this area is dry and I wanna clean this up a little bit. So I, I've still got some wet paint over here I'm gonna go back in and I did not dry my brush off as well as I should have. So make sure that you're drying your brush off or you're gonna end up putting really thin paint on top and pulling up some of the paint that's underneath it. So this is getting closer to how I want it. Sometimes if you're afraid, um, if you don't want to use water, I can also gradually mix the color that's underneath it. So even if that color is dry, if I want to remix just part of it, to help me blend better, that's another thing that you can do. All right, that orange is dry now. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. Dry it off really good. Sometimes if you add different colors, like I know that this white will thicken up the orange. I was trying to refrain from using it because I don't want it to be a tint of orange, but I'm gonna add just enough so that it thickens it up a little bit. It's starting to look a little bit peachy. But if you can thicken it up so that it blends better, that's another strategy. Now I'm gonna start blending some of this yellow in. This yellow paint is also super thin. So again, I'm gonna mix a little bit of white. And you see how I'm using, I'm using this area up here to blend my color because this is all wet paint down here and it's not the color that I need. So adding the white to that yellow paint didn't change the value too much and it helped thicken the paint. So at this point, I'm pretty happy with those gradients. Um, I'm gonna leave them how they are. Hopefully this video is informative and it will give you a solid foundation that you can use to build on as you're building your painting practice and learning new skills. The only other thing that I wanna to talk to you about is how to clean the paint brushes. When you're washing the brushes, if they have acrylic in them, um, they can the paint can get up inside the brush um, so that you have, so you have to actually massage the paintbrush when you're washing it. I know that sounds ridiculous and my kids always laugh at me and get uncomfortable when I say that, but you really do. Um, when you wash your paintbrush, put some dish detergent or some soap just on top of the brush and then you're going to basically pinch the brush so that you can get the soap into the middle of the brush and pull from this end to that end. 
to keep the brush in the same shape while you're rinsing it. And then to store the brush, if you're going to put it back in a cup or something, make sure that you store it like this so that the bristles are pointed up. If you store it like this in a cup, then the bristles are pushing down like this while it's sitting there and it eventually takes on that shape. So in order to make the brushes last longer, just make sure you wash them out with soap well and that you store them like this. Also, do not clean your brushes like this. Um, that's gonna destroy the shape. Make sure that you're cleaning this way, you're using soap, and that you store them this way.